Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, um, Entrepreneurship as a Path Towards per Personal and Professional Empowerment for Teenage Girls. My name is Miriam Zaidi, and I am the Communications and National Network Coordinator here at the Girls Action Foundation. In a couple of minutes, I'll be passing the mic to Despina Surius from Glambition Entre Entrepreneurship. We're very fortunate to have her with us today. I'm happy to see some familiar names joining us for today's webinar. For those returning, welcome back. For those of you who are new to our webinar series, I wanted to briefly introduce you to the Girls Action Foundation before passing things along, along to Despina. So very quickly, uh, Girls Action Foundation is a national nonprofit that believes in the power of girls as agents of, of social change. Through our network of organizations across Canada, we lead, develop, and implement transformative programs that are adapted and relevant to the changing realities of girls' and young women's lives. We also provide leadership trainings on a national scale, organize networking events, and do other activities that connect girls and young women. Just before passing the mic to Despina, I'd like to walk you through the interactive side of today's webinar. You'll see on your screen a number of different information displays and panels that will be changing throughout the presentation. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a panel titled Q&A. Here's where you can ask questions and interact with myself and other participants. If you have a question or comment during the presentation, type it into the Q&A box, hit enter, and it will be recorded there. By default, the question will be visible to everyone. If you would prefer to submit your question privately, click on the down arrow at the bottom of the Q&A box and select Girls Action instead of All Participants. The question will then come only to me. At the end of Despina's presentation, we will be answering questions from the Q&A box. So feel free to ask your questions as they come, and I will ask them to Despina at the end of her presentation. Also, through the, throughout the presentation, we will take some polls these won't last more than a couple of minutes. I wanted to let you know that today's webinar is being recorded, including the question period. This will be posted online, and we'll send everyone a link to the recording. Finally, at the end of the webinar, a survey will pop up. Please, please fill it out. We'd love to hear your feedback. So now I would like to introduce um, Despina. Uh, so Despina Sturius has over a dozen years of experience working in the field of community development locally and abroad. The organizations she, she supports serve mainly multicultural and marginalized populations, specifically racial and ethnic minorities, youth, and women. Her love for empowering others to reach their potential led her to, to, uh, to present uh, to this present position as an entrepreneurship awareness and promotion officer for the Table des Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi de l'Île de Montréal. She co-founded Glambition Entrepreneurship in this capacity in 2010 as a means to introduce girls to the world of entrepreneurship. The activity has since expanded across the province, reaching over 1,000 girls since its inception. She's also passionate about international development and is a, is a board member and president of FEM International. She brings with her a collaborative leadership style and extensive knowledge in entrepreneurship promotion as well as capacity building initiatives. With that covered, I'd like to pass uh, the ball to Despina. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is the first time I'm uh, on do giving a webinar, so please bear with me. Uh, I, I'd like to thank uh, the Girls Action Foundation for inviting me to do this. Uh, it's a pleasure to share my knowledge and my experiences with uh, like-minded uh, people. Uh, but before we start, I have a couple of poll questions that uh, the Girls Action is going to put forth, uh, just to have a better sense of what, who everybody is and what everybody's interests are. So I see that most of you are from the nonprofit sector or outside of that or other. Uh, maybe we could post a second question. Okay, so I see the answers to the, the question. Uh, most of you do not develop entrepreneurship-based activities. A couple of you do. So I think that this is, will be interesting to kind of learn more about um, what we do especially what's happening in Quebec related to entrepreneurship education. 
Um, so I guess we could uh, go straight to the PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared. Uh, my workshop is entitled Entrepreneurship as a Path Towards Personal Professional Empowerment for Teenage Girls. Um, and in terms of the content, we're going to be looking at um, we're going to I'll be introducing a little bit the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi and the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge. Uh, this will give you a better understanding of what's happening in Quebec in terms of entrepreneurship promotion and education. Um, also, looking a bit more into the concept of entrepreneurship as a professional uh, choice and attitude and what, what is being an entrepreneur, what is being entrepreneurial. Those are the kinds of ideas that I, I want to like um, share with you. Uh, then I'm going to go right into what is Glambition, why does it exist, kind of what led us to create this activity specifically for girls. Uh, then we're going to look at what has been the impact on girls and a little bit uh, we're going to talk about what we want to do in the future with this, uh, with this one day activity that we developed. Um, and then we might finish with a little video at the end. So going to what are the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi. Uh, there's 112 Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi in the province of Quebec with 20 in Montreal. Uh, we're the largest city in Quebec, so we have quite a lot of, a lot of terrain to cover. Uh, what they are essentially, they're community supported um, centers that support the, the, the social and professional integration of youth between the ages of 16 and 35. Uh, and they serve specific territories that are assigned to each and they develop services that reflect the, the needs of every territory. So in Montreal, for example, I'm based, my Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi is based in Notre Dame de Grasse, which is a very culturally diverse area, more English speaking than other parts of Montreal, which is a reality because in Quebec, obviously there's a majority French speaking population with minority English speaking, which is very, it's very specific. And NDG, it's, we're very bilingual. So we develop our services accordingly and also we try to service the, uh, the large immigrant population that we have on that territory. In terms of funding, the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi is a model that was developed in 1995. It was uh, um, taken on, it was developed in the Outaouais region and then taken on by the provincial government and they wanted to kind of extend it throughout the province. Um, and so there's funding that has been assigned to the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi through the Ministry of Employment of Le Québec. Um, that's for the basic services. Other services, including mine in terms of entrepreneurship promotion, uh, uh, we get funding from the Secretariat à la Jeunesse, and there's, that's the Youth Secretariat, by the way. And obviously there's other kinds of funding that we could get to develop other services that are not covered by these two funders. Uh, in terms of the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge, this is a strategy or a measure that was developed by the government of Quebec in 2004 to promote entrepreneurship to youth between the ages of 5 to 35. So it goes beyond the actual age that we, the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi cover, which is 16 to 35. Um, and the reason why the government developed this strategy under the Youth Secretariat, because there was less entrepreneurial development in the province of Quebec than in the other provinces and generally in North America. So we, this side, the idea is let's promote, let's get entrepreneurship, let's get youth interested in entrepreneurship so that eventually there is more businesses being developed in Quebec. And it's, it's because the, the government has associated, obviously, and this is not only here, it's kind of across the board, entrepreneurship allows, especially small medium businesses allow for economic growth. So that's kind of the idea behind it. It's like start young, get, get their mind to be more entrepreneurial, and eventually there will be some overall fruit to this work that we put in. So the, the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi, along with some other actors on the ground, have, are, are kind of carrying this mandate. So we, uh, my job is covered by the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge. I'm the Entrepreneurship Awareness and Promotion Officer. It's a very long title. But we're uh, on the island of Montreal, we're 16. I think there's almost 100 across the province of uh, people like myself. Uh, what are our targets? So under the challenge, we are we are looking at developing entrepreneurship in schools within the community. So working with young adults who have a business idea or who, uh, who want to develop a project. It could be community-based project, and we support them in validating their idea. So we do pre-startup uh, support, and obviously we will work with the more marginalized using entrepreneurship as a way to empower them in order to get 
uh, in order for them to get out of the situation that they may be in. And we do it through workshops. We have, we also support projects in schools. So we bring that entrepreneurial approach, help them bring an entrepreneurial approach to building projects in schools. Uh, like I mentioned, pre start uh, counseling, sorry. And uh, we also develop specialized programs. For example, I, I've developed with uh, colleagues a project that allows a, that allows a handful of youth to travel to Germany to learn more about the entrepreneurial culture in Germany so that they're able to build their uh, project based on what they're learning through this international exchange. So this is a, it's the third time we're going to be uh, going there this year. So this is a kind of pro programs and projects that we could develop given that we have such a such scope to cover and uh, such so many different needs to, to address. Uh, in terms of the difference between entrepreneurship and an entrepreneurial mindset, one leads to the other. So the entrepreneurial mindset is a mindset that enables a person to proactively act in order to change one's own and other, other, people, other people's destinies. Uh, so it's like a go-getting kind of attitude. Um, and an entrepreneurship itself is more of a term that's applied to any organized economic activity that brings solutions to observed or incited needs. So entrepreneurship is kind of like the, the outcome of having an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, we really, given that we work with a lot of younger youth, uh, we focus on building the latter in order to get to the, to the former. Um, however, we have this, I'll give you a little bit of a background of how we came to develop Grambition out of this mandate. So we, 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 we were noticing that back in 2010 when we developed Grambition, uh, we noticed that promoting uh, entrepreneurship without a genderless, a gender lens was uh, not very fruitful because we didn't see, we had difficulty identifying um, female entrepreneurs for our activities. Uh, most known entrepreneurs are men, and we also identify a lot with American entrepreneurs. We don't have a lot of access to local entrepreneurs on TV, and so this is back then. It has changed since then, but this was the original kind of um, feeling we had. Uh, so when we think of entrepreneurs, a lot of people name Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. It's all these tech entrepreneurs, American entrepreneurs that come to mind. Also, entrepreneurship, and this we had difficulty with when we were trying to work with schools, entrepreneurship is really linked to money making, which is not necessarily the case. Entrepreneurship is, is beyond money making. Uh, an entrepreneurial mindset goes beyond money making. Entrepreneurial mindset is about solving problems. So that's something also we're like, okay, you know, uh, you know, women a lot of times when they do go into business, they look at, uh, they look at stuff beyond the bottom line. So this is kind of what we're, we're feeling. We're like, okay, well, we have to bring another kind of shape to entrepreneurship, another, another way of looking at it. Uh, another thing that we notice is uh, if, you're, if you don't make an effort, uh, we, do not, we, don't also, we won't highlight the input and the challenges that women have in starting a business. So whether it's, you know, talking about young girls doing it, which might have, might, they might be facing the challenge of, you know, not having the self-confidence versus a woman having to balance uh, her life and her work, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff that we wanted to bring forth and to kind of, you know, it's kind of important to bring a woman's perspective in this. Um, other needs that we were seeing is that there are less women entrepreneurs uh, who are founders or heads of companies. So we wanted to highlight the ones that do exist, and we do have access to this network as professionals working in the community um, field and as professionals uh, having to make a link with entrepreneurs. We are in contact with women entrepreneurs who are pretty inspiring. Another thing that, it, that has been noticed is that women build businesses later than men do. Usually women build businesses in their 30s. Men tend to start businesses in their 20s. Actually, men, the average retirement age for a male entrepreneur is 47. Women may be starting their business around that time, and this is because we hesitate. So what we wanted to do in order for people, for young girls to start uh, uh, businesses sooner or projects sooner, we need to encourage trials. So this is, you know, one of the other reasons behind Grand Vision. Um, 
obviously I mentioned the fact that there's not a lot of uh, diversity in the models presented, and this is as much most entrepreneurs that are known are American. Um, and sometimes when we talk about women entrepreneurs, it's usually celebrities. So we needed to find, make an effort to find entrepreneurs that are women, that are local, that are not white or just black or just they're mixed. We wanted to show the diversity that exists behind it and also different business models, not just like a corporate model. Maybe the cooperative model is interesting. Maybe the NGO model is interesting. There's a lot of different models that are interesting. So we wanted to kind of bring that forth. Uh, and there's also what we, we feel there's also a lack of links uh, between school and established entrepreneurs. So because, again, when we have the network, we're like, well, let's bring those two worlds together. And uh, this creates obviously, uh, all the, uh, creates an opportunity for all these needs to be met. So Glambition is pretty much a result of wanting to address this. Um, in terms of uh, uh, some benefits, so we, we have also been looking at ways to show that women, that it's important to support women uh, starting businesses. Uh, we do see an increase in the rate of women starting businesses, uh, and it's a, it's a rate that grows faster than that of men going into business. Maybe it's because men have been doing it for longer, so the rate, the, the quickness of women wanting to do it is, is more evident now, and this is in the last couple of years that these numbers came out. It's the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor kind of brought these numbers forth. Um, it has also been noted uh, that women uh, with the lead projects create more jobs. Women who start their own businesses create more jobs and also create flexible and work environments. These are positive uh, benefits for uh, the, develop, the economic development uh, of, our, of our provinces, of our country, and stuff like that. So at the end, we just feel like we need we're going to have more models, not only for girls, but also for young boys, by developing diversity in our in our programming, we're able to influence not only girls, but boys as well. And that's the key to Glambition. Um, now, about the mission itself, uh, Glambition aims to foster an entrepreneurial spirit in girls who are between the ages of 12 to 17. And we do this by introducing them to female entrepreneurs uh, during this one day. It's a one day event, bilingual. Participants have the opportunity to interact with women entrepreneurs who have inspiring personal journeys and career paths, and very diverse career paths, um, and allows them, and they do this through interactive workshops. So we do this, this is what we came up with in 2010, uh, and it started here in Montreal, but now we have uh, local committees in Quebec City and Trois-Rivières. I'll tell you a little bit more about the local committee structure as we move forth with the presentation. Uh, and just a little bit more about how it started. The idea came to us uh, when two of my colleagues came back from a trip in Virginia. It was an entrepreneurship education conference. And uh, they were inspired by seeing all these only girl activities uh, that were developed over there. And they wanted to kind of adapt something for here. Actually, it was linked to science and inventing stuff for, but cater to girls, and this, we, develop, we wanted to develop something more entrepreneurship related for here. So that's how we came about to creating the event in 2010. Um, and now in the name, because we've gotten a lot of criticism about the name, because we're putting forth the, the word glamour, and it's not necessarily, uh, it's a bit of a shock for, for parents uh, or school sometimes when you hear it. But to us, we saw being ambitious is glamorous, and all it's, forms, colors, and possibilities. Uh, and uh, we wanted to also bring another lens to what being glamorous means. It's not just about fame, because glamour is about fame and looking good. It's not just what you, what you see. It's the journey behind it important and all the other different qualities that are, are also linked to entrepreneurship. So self-discovery, perseverance, self-confidence, creativity, leadership are all part of the process of making things happen. So that's how the name came about. Another reason why we chose the name Glambition, it sounds good in both French and English, is l'ambition, Glambition. So that was another factor that made us decide that. And we decided to keep that name because it, it, we've kind of created a name for ourselves. So that's where we are right now. And now, 
in terms of the model, what we from from the get go, we wanted to, we didn't want to contain uh, Grand Vision to Montreal. We did want it to grow across the province, especially because one of the core partners had a provincial mandate. Uh, one of the co-founders actually had a provincial mandate, so we had a bit of that leverage and our network of uh, entrepreneurship awareness and promotions officers exist across the province. So we, we had a bit of that leverage. We're like, we wanted to go beyond Montreal. So we had to make something simple that's easy to reproduce. Of course, there, there are, um, I think, differing points or I guess elements that make every region or local event different. Uh, language, social class, and I think ethnic backgrounds of the demographic that we work with. For example, in Montreal, pretty it's a pretty uh, bilingual, I would say, city. Um, I would say 30 or 40 percent of our participants are coming from English-speaking schools, and then the rest are coming from the francophone schools. Um, so we, it's pretty bilingual. And Quebec City, for example, we had initiated it as bilingual. But they were getting a lot of response from the English school, so they've, they, they've adapted it to make it more for the French-speaking girls. And also cultural, um, I guess, references are a bit different, French and English, so that also affects the programming that comes from there, who we choose as a spokesperson and, and stuff like that. Uh, the number of schools that are involved, we could go between 1 and 15. When we first started, I think we had six schools that came to the event. Uh, in Quebec City, they piloted. They had piloted it with one, uh, one school, and then they grew it and they opened it to more schools. So it, it really varies uh, from one year to another. Um, in terms of the date, we originally thought of it to be part of Global Entrepreneurship Week, which happens around November 16th, 17th. Um, but of course, we are one of our uh, colleagues from MOTC who developed it in Tosia mentioned, you know, we would be interesting also to have the option of doing it during International Women's Day. So we were up for that because it, it gives you it gives you the option of doing it around um, a theme that's related to the event, either women or entrepreneurship or both. Uh, and the number of girls uh, it ranges from 60 to 150. Um, again, the first year we did it, where we were at 77, we went up to 130 one year. Uh, it really varies. In Quebec City, it's the same thing. The average out about 110, 106. It really depends um, what's happening in the schools. If we get a smaller venue, bigger venue, there's different factors that affect that. And of course, the local committee composition is mainly mainly consists of by Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi and all the territories that it exists in, in, in Quebec City, Mauricie, and, uh, and in uh, Montreal, we're all, the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi are basically the founding our organizations and we work with other partners. So we've had, um, for example, in Montreal, we work with Co-op School. We have uh, the Collective Entrepreneurship Awareness uh, Officers that work with us from the beginning, that have been working with us from the beginning. They're actually one of the founding partners. And um, in Quebec City, for example, one year they worked with the Y de Femme, or like the, the, the Women's Y. So it, it, have, it depends on the local reality. And Marie City they were actually approached by a school board to develop it. So it's really like, it's, it, it really varies in depending on the regional realities. Um, so, I did mention that we, we are like one of the main partners in the local committees. Uh, we do meet monthly and work in smaller committees uh, and our, usually our meetings are pre-scheduled. What's important about this slide, really, I wanted to show that we, we, we did, we do have some values that we try to transmit and we want kind of the local committees to try this out. Uh, we do focus on cooperation, skills, building and passion, bringing our passion into the work that we do. Uh, a lot of the members that come into our committees uh, have said uh, that it's a, basically a, a great learning experience because we really work, we really, the theme of the event is brings out like, I guess, uh, um, our interests, our preoccupations as well. We also, we try to put ourselves in the girl's shoes. So it creates a lot of like, I guess, um, very collaborative environment. And in terms of the decision making, it's not centralized. We decentralize it. We all have separate tasks, and we 
try to come to consensus when it comes to decisions. So we usually use our meetings to decide on decide things. Um, we do, the way we work with the other committees, it's not like all centralized to one person. We do collaborate, we do talk about when we wanted to change, for example, the image of the activity, we, uh, the logo meaning, I, you know, I had to speak with the lead of Quebec City to decide what the look will be and that's how we, um, that's how we came to the, the agreement on the new look. So we do try to have some conformity in terms of the content and the communications that we develop that, that allows for that. Um, but until recently, what we felt was lacking is that we didn't have girls in the process of organizing the event. We didn't work with the girls directly. Yes, we were creating the event for girls, but we didn't, we did take surveys after every event to kind of get a sense of what they liked, they didn't like, what they would want to see in the future. But this year we want to push that a bit forward. Uh, and I'll get back to that a little bit later. In terms of the details of the event, uh, how do we make it happen? Uh, the budget isn't huge. It's between 1000 to $5,000. Our first event cost us less than $1,000. Um, this year, we it, it went up to about $4,000. Uh, mind you that uh, our, our jobs allow us to do this, so there's no uh, overhead, I would say that we, we have to worry about too much, so it allows us to really focus on direct costs. Uh, the workshops that we have, that we develop during the day are interactive, and um, we integrate a do-it-yourself component, which is something that the girls appreciate. Um, the speakers that we have come from very diverse industries, and uh, they have different project models, as I mentioned earlier, so we have people from the arts, we have women that uh, work with in education sector, as uh, some of them, you know, they have businesses working with animals. They have, it's a very diverse, um, so that's always very interesting to see what girls are attracted to, because they get to choose their workshops until recently they were getting to choose them. Um, uh, we also allow for networking between the girls and between the girls and the entrepreneurs, and that's important because they get to really uh, build ties at the event. Uh, there's always time for self-reflection. It's a bit of a pedagogical approach where you kind of reflect back on what you learned and position yourself vis-a-vis -vis entrepreneurship. And finally, we do, we usually have a spokesperson. And in the last two years, we've also had an honorary president. And these, the, these two people, these two women, uh, share the task of promoting and raising awareness about the event. Um, of course, we try to pick, pick spokespeople that speak to the girls. Uh, we had Dorit Siro this year. She's a comedian here in uh, Montreal. Uh, she was very liked. We've had uh, slam artists, uh, spoken word artists, sorry, previously. So we try to uh, change that up. <laughs> and But we want to make sure that it reflects the girls' interests. Of course, Quebec City, they might have uh, other they, they choose their own spokesperson depending on their local reality. They had a, uh, a, a young woman who uh, was in uh, on the show La Voix, and she's pretty popular amongst the teenage girls. And you know that that's who they chose. So we don't really that's not something that we share. However, the honorary president we've shared over the years. So uh, in terms of a typical day, I'll give you our 2014 model. We had the opening of the day, then we had workshops, uh, a selection of workshops uh, from which the girls could choose and go to one. So they could choose their both English and French. So they choose whether they want to go to an English or French workshop, and they choose a theme that they would like to, to, um, to, to hear about. And that's how they're going to go and meet the entrepreneur and they get to learn more about what uh, that person has done, about the personal journey, and they get to apply what they learned. Same thing happens in the afternoon and then we have closing activity. In Quebec City this year, it was a little bit different from that. Uh, they, they had an opening activity, they had some workshops in the morning, and they actually had a brainstorming activity in the afternoon, project brainstorming. They did that last year as well and they gave out like a little, um, little grant for the project, something that we would like to try probably next year. And in terms of what we, what other things we'd like to try next year is really bringing the girls into the committee. We've already started the process of selecting uh, the girls within the schools that we work with. So the idea is to create an advisory committee uh, comprised of seven girls, um, 
third will be English speaking, at least at two or three, and the rest will be from the French school. So kind of representative of also the demographic that we work with. Uh, and we want to give them the power to to create Glamdition. So their role will be to advise us, <laughs> uh, to choose the do-it-yourself activities, because it came up a lot in the comments. You really like the do-it-yourself, but you want to push the do-it-yourself component. Uh, so we want to hear more about what kind of do-it-yourself activities interest them. Uh, we also want them to prepare girls in their schools to come to the event so they could be more aware of what entrepreneurship is before, maybe have a little bit of a base, uh, which you'll see later is a bit of a comment that we've had that sometimes they're not as ready. Some, some goals are more than others, so maybe balance that out a little bit. Uh, another thing we would like to, we would like these girls to recruit other girls in their schools so they become kind of like ambassadors in their schools uh, for Glambition, and we'd like for them to host part of the day. So that's what we have in mind for 2016 in Montreal. I know Quebec City also wants to do that. Uh, we'll find out what's going to happen with the next edition in Mozissi because they're doing theirs in March. And next point, what is the impact on girls of our activity? Um, so across the province, we've, uh, we have reached collectively over 1,000 girls, which we're very proud of. Um, some feedback from participants. I see I misspoke participants, but sorry about that. <laughs> uh, a lot of them, they, well, they feel less shy. That's one thing, because they get to interact, they get to present themselves. So a lot of girls come out feeling a little bit less shy, coming out of their comfort zone, which is great for us. Um, they, are, they know more about a field that interests them. They do say that they need more information about entrepreneurship before they come so they could feel more comfortable and confident. So we're working on that. Uh, another thing is that they do have a desire also to be change makers. We do activities uh, like side activities to kind of see what they want to be in the future and stuff like that. And it does come up that they want to like live their passion and they want to also uh, do something positive for others. So this is something that we're going to be, we'd like to maybe uh, give them the opportunity to do this here. Um, some deeper insights. We do notice that a lot of their concerns uh, stem from, uh, and, like, our, our kind of, their preoccupations, I would say, kind of fall more into uh, self-esteem related issues, self-confidence, and appearance related issues. It's, it's still there, even though the event is about entrepreneurship. Um, that comes out a lot. Uh, and that's something that, you know, we, we, we are open and we allow for a varied response to those uh, questions. Basically, I'll give you a, a summary of that. We had uh, a small group of girls from uh, a school that had developed what they call uh, an activity called Nazi Sans Maquillage, which is Tuesdays Without Makeup. And they were kind of presenting, it was a whole theme this year about, you know, wearing or not wearing makeup, what makes you feel good about yourself and whatnot, and it, it was a debate. The girls are like, well, makeup is a way of expressing yourself, and other girls are like, no, makeup is not for me, makeup sucks. So it was something that comes up of appearance. Although the activity is about entrepreneurship, that came up, and it's come up in other years as well. Um, next, uh, we do notice that interest vary greatly. It's, uh, we might think most girls are interested in, in fashion and makeup, but it's not necessarily the case. There's a good variety of interests, and we noticed this especially in previous years when the girls had to select the entrepreneurs that they were going to meet. Uh, you weren't all going for uh, the makeup or like the the fashion, the fashionistas. You know, they were uh, they were interested in in a lot of other areas, which is and this is what we find it's important to show them that, you know, whatever you're passionate about, you could build on and, and it could be in any, and entrepreneurs come from, could come from different industries. So a lawyer could become an entrepreneur, um, biologists could create strong companies. So this is the whole idea behind it. Uh, of course, uh, when we asked them who we want, who they want their spokespersons to be, uh, they said that they want women to whom they can relate. So that question came up, there was a couple of girls who mentioned Beyonce, Emma Watson, these are more popular, uh, you know, known women. Um, but a lot of them did talk about women that they could relate to, and that not only for spokespeople, we also mentioned that obviously for entrepreneurs. So kind of uh, confirmed that our instinct to diversify uh, whom they meet uh, was a good, was a good, uh, was a good 
I guess, a good, a good, a good idea. Um, and now for the visions for the next three years, uh, we do want to, in terms more logistically speaking, we'd like to create a common portal, a website portal, for all three of our present uh, GLAM visions. So one, it will be a, basically a website that will allow you to go to whichever one you're interested in and kind of make the link between the three without us, again, over-centralizing the information and the organization of the event. Uh, we do, we would love to have offshoots in schools, and a couple of teachers have brought this up that they think it would be nice activity, a nice activity for girls to do in their schools, to bring, you know, bring in a couple of entrepreneurs as well, exposing um, also boys to, 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 to women entrepreneurs. Uh, another idea has, that we have is to uh, have a startup day for girls, interested in running projects. So we're kind of, uh, we would like them to it'd be a whole day where they're developing their idea, getting an action plan going, and linked to that, it's the fifth point uh, on this slide. Uh, we want to create a fund, kind of a, a, an operational fund, I guess, for the event, obviously, but also for pro projects that arise from this startup day. Um, of course, our goal is to have more grand vision and local committees. <laughs> uh, so we'd like at least one more in Quebec and maybe a couple outside the province. So if any of you are interested after this presentation, please let me know. And uh, and then of course, we would also like to build a similar day for boys that will tackle their concerns. And this is something that we've been thinking about for years, but it takes a lot to organize this one day. So we definitely need to have like a slide committee uh, to kind of look at that and focus on what kind of, um, what kind of you know, programming would be interesting. And this would also appease teachers who are looking at, you know, they all, they have, to be for the girls that day that they are out of school and they're, you know, but what are they going to do with the boys? So that, that's also one of the reasons why we were thinking about doing something like this. Uh, here are some pictures. See some, uh, right here you see Doris Hiro. She's our, uh, she was our spokesperson. These are the girls. Uh, and taking a selfie. She, she's really into selfies. Uh, here's our speaker, Lizette Flores. I'm going to try to get you, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, uh, get the, her video up. She talks about her, uh, she created dolls that represent the diversity in women, and the, it really came from the fact that she couldn't find any dolls for herself as a child. She has girls, and she wanted to kind of give them different role models to work with. And Carlotte Mibel, she has her own communications company. She was really inspiring, and she really talked about her journey to becoming an entrepreneur, having already worked with women entrepreneurs in the past. Here is our committee and volunteers. I'm hiding one of the the volunteers. Here's a little girl. And this year we actually had what we what was interesting is that a lot of the, a few of the the women uh, entrepreneurs and one of our volunteers actually came with their kids. So the girls got to see their kids got to see what the day was all about. One of them was actually a young boy. So that was really it was really nice. It was a very uh, I guess. Uh, women in kid-friendly environments. And this year we also did it at Dawson College, uh, which is the first for us. In previous years we were doing it in community centers, and which this was amazing because they got to also go to uh, CJIP, which is kind of like the next step after high school, CJIP being when they're, they usually go into CJIP when they're 17. So they were close, they were there, they were able to see the school, they were able to see the, the kind of the uh, the energy, and that was a, a huge benefit for us. And we also got them to think of what they would present to us different ideas for next year. So the final today, this year's uh, final activity was really about them coming up with proposals for next year. And the things that came up were really interesting. Um, they really, they, they do want a, a day that allows them to learn, that allows them to focus on uh, being audacious, being uh, passion, living their passions, and uh, kind of identifying their dreams. So uh, that was great to hear from them. So again, I, I guess thank you for listening to me. Uh, if you're interested in knowing any more about ambition, developing something in your area, if you're if you want some bounce ideas about other entrepreneurial activities for for girls, boys, for for youth, I'm there. My email address and my cell number pretty available uh, on both those. And these are the websites for Glambition in Quebec City and in Montreal. 
Uh, we also have a Facebook page and stuff like that. So I guess like I, I, if you're interested, I could also send you the PowerPoint with all this information for you to have. Thank you. Um, great. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, uh, Despina. That was a really great presentation. And sorry about the video. Um, okay. We will. Um, we can uh, try to send it to the participants uh, when we mm -hmm. send the recording. For sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's all the time we have uh, for the the presentation. Um, for those, uh, I'm, right now what I will do is um, go to the Q&A, and um, I see we have a couple of questions already, mm -hmm. uh, and those of you who don't have any questions, um, that's time for you to think about questions. Um, so we have here um, a question from Jillian. Mm -hmm. um, she wrote that your work is very interesting and unique. <laughs> um, do you know of similar initiatives in other provinces? And have you partnered with groups outside of Quebec? Or maybe you're thinking of partnering outside of uh, mm -hmm. Quebec? Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, um, you can answer that question, and I'll read the, the next one. So I could so, just answer it? I could just type? Uh, no, you can just answer it live. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah. So I, I thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real, it's, it's a pleasure sharing it, too, because I really love uh, Glamour, and I love the energy. I love the way that I work with my colleagues on this. And we all get really excited about it. So actually, I, I don't know of any similar activity. I know that there's girl-oriented activities uh, where we, you know, girls are allowed to think of projects to support the communities and stuff like that. But I, I don't know of any other uh, activity that looks like this one. And I don't know of any other province that has the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge either that exists. So I think that's kind of unique, it's, I think, specifically for Quebec. And I, I have thought about partner, partnering up with groups outside of Quebec, but I haven't found any. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, great. Uh, thanks a lot. And of course, um, um, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, um, there is, there is um, funding for it uh, specifically in Quebec because of uh, the lack of business um, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that's, uh, but that's like it's a yeah. bit of a reality across Canada. We do have less entrepreneurship here than in like than in the U.S., for example. Yeah, but yeah. It's just, here, it's just the, the rate was very slow. <laughs> it has changed yeah. in the last ten years. We do see a rise. We even have uh, Dragon Den, uh, the Air du Dragon, um, here yeah. in Quebec as well. So it's becoming yeah. more popular to talk about entrepreneurship, but. Yeah. There's still work to be done in the women's side and making, uh, the, the, keeping the social aspect of it still there and considering it's not just business to make money, bringing in the kind of the triple bottom line approach, there's still work to be done there. Yeah, and, and um, what I like the most about um, uh, your initiative and, and your presentation is, is how you brought the gender um, aspect mm -hmm. and the race aspect, which is um, mm -hmm. really important. And of course, um, a lot of the time in the public figures uh, that we see, uh, girls don't see themselves really in those figures. So, Of course. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for bringing that up. Actually, the second mm -hmm. question was just about the videos and um, and, and just seeing, um, having access to that. Oh, uh, we have another question that just came up. Um, is there a program model, uh, this is from Tala, um, is there a program model we can get inspired from and are we entitled to use and uh, reproduce? Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Yeah. Uh, yes, we, there is a model. Uh, we, we did develop it more for the province given that we have the network within, sorry about that, there's a phone ringing here. Um, there is a, uh, we developed it for the province because we have our network of entrepreneurship awareness and promotion officers in the Carrefour Jeunesse Emploi. So it's kind of like owned by us and it comes from, you know, we develop it with public money. So that would work for here. We haven't overly thought about how we're going to extend it out. Although we, the model itself, we, we, we should discuss that <laughs> to see how we could bring it about because it's a fairly simple concept. Um, and we kind of protected the name and stuff for it, so we could bring it to the next level and work with somebody to bring it outside of the province of Quebec. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. is it, um, did you publish, uh, do you have any publications related uh, to the model, um, or are you thinking of maybe making it's it? It's internal, it's more internal. This is what we okay. had discussed last year, is to, when we create the portal, we could uh, we create some sort of like, uh, a resource that could be used for that and how, and how to use a name and all that. So we, we, we haven't 
done that because we worked so much on building our local activities. And this is where the idea of having, like creating, developing, I guess, like a structure around it that would allow us to do it, including a fund for it. So maybe having like some seed funding for, you know, activities that are being developed in other provinces or across the province here. So we're still working on that because it hasn't been, it hasn't gotten out of the province. But when we're working with our local committees in Quebec City and stuff, we had a document that would explain what it's all about. But we have similar resources. So it was easy to do it for like, you know, somebody in, <laughs> in Quebec, like our partners or our colleagues in Quebec City, you know. If it's in another province, then it would have to be adapted as well, you know. That's like, yeah. It's a good yeah, question, and this is what we're, that's what we're reflecting on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and you do need funding to publish things, so <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. hopefully you can get um, that funding mm -hmm. and, and spread it out. Yeah. It's a really great initiative. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Tala, thanks you for your answer. Um, so I don't see any other questions, um, and we only have a few minutes left. Uh, oh, I think there's another one here. Oh, we do have some questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so one coming. of the yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a uh, question is: Have you worked in rural communities? And if so, are there extra barriers or adaptations needed to offer programs based on entrepreneurship in small communities? Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned uh, Trois Rivières, mm -hmm. which is pretty small too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from uh, there are barriers, of course, different ones from in the city. Uh, and I guess I, I haven't worked in rural communities because my mandate is for the island of Montreal. Mm -hmm. So I am, I'm, I'm in the city. So that's the reality I live with. And, the, and our philosophy behind it is really reflects Montreal a little bit, the diversity aspect, the uh, accessibility uh, based on the city structure. Uh, in, rural, on rural, in rural areas, the entrepreneurship activities that we've developed, not including um, Glambition, it's always difficult to get to places, um, access meaning the things don't, you don't move as easily. And obviously you need different kinds of resources or more resources to get to point A, from point A to point B. Um, local realities are also different. Uh, you know, you could talk about entrepreneurship in all its shapes and sizes, meaning different, different kinds of uh, businesses that could come out, but in, you know, in rural communities and in our, if you have, I guess, um, different industries that should be de that could be developed that are uh, that are potentially or there is opportunity. So that that's kind of that's brought into the work that we do. So there are campaigns in rural communities where, uh, you know, we try to encourage uh, you know development of local farming or other industries mm -hmm. that are more local to that specific community. So that that's that's it happens, but not linked to. Um, necessarily to Glambition. Okay. I don't know um, if that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that really does, yeah. Uh, well, in my opinion, anyway. <laughs> um, we have another question here from Clara, because you mentioned uh, some feedback from, from the girls and what interests them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, her question is, could you tell us of other examples of entrepreneurial projects that young women and girls have shared their passion about at your events? <laughs> Okay. Uh, in terms of, um, just to clarify, we're talking about what kind of businesses interest them or projects yeah. that they're doing themselves. Um, I'm not sure. Um, it just says examples of entrepreneurial projects that young women and girls have shared their passion about at their at your events. Maybe coming from mm -hmm. the girls. I would. I would. Okay. Yeah. Um, Coming from the girls, I mean, the 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 likes oh, what yes. they like to refer to. to. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a. I'll give you a very. We had some very young girls coming to our event a couple of years ago, and we started the day with like a Zumba session, and a couple of the girls wanted to do Zumba lessons in their school, for example. So they wanted to uh, organize them, get the instructor to come in every Friday and lunchtime to do the Zumba sessions. So that's something that it's it's, it's very small. It's nothing mm -hmm. extravagant. But that's something that was interesting to them, knowing, okay, I could organize this, and I like this. It was fun, so let me put it together and get other people to do it. That's a very simple uh, activity that was uh, that came out of the day. Um, other ones, I mean, they, some of them just want to stay attached to the event. You know, they come from one year to the other, so they encourage their friends to come too. But that that has that has always been a struggle too for us to keep 
um, the contact with the youth because, you know, we can't overly solicit like, girls directly, so we usually go through the school. So that coming, coming back every year is, is one way of, I guess, keeping the link. Um, projects that interest them, I'm trying to think of something else that has come out. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit, I'm not sure right now, but I could maybe get back to you on that. I could look through the documentation that we have too, because we do have surveys at the end of every activity, uh, every day. So I could maybe get back to you on that. Okay, great. Um, yeah. That would be great. Thank you. And then um, uh, uh, Tala asked again, uh, well, not again, but she's asking um, how can she have updates about the progress of, of Glambition and um, what's the best way to find updates? Um, so uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned... Well, uh, yeah. There's Facebook. Okay. <laughs> we Facebook. have a Facebook page. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's uh, it's the Glambition, uh, Glambition Entrepreneurship Montreal and there's Glambition Quebec as well. They have their own webpage. And if you haven't developed a web page, like a Facebook page or a web page, because you do it within like the, where they do it with the school board, so I think they don't delimit the promotion of the activity. It's only their second year. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's that's what we have for, to follow. If you want to follow directly, I mean, you could definitely contact me. And I okay. just realized that I have the wrong address on. I, I put the wrong address, my the wrong email address on my presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can I can type up uh, the right. One. Yeah. It's the uh, despina dot serious at c j e dash n d g dot com. So that's how you could you could. We don't have a newsletter or stuff like that. We haven't developed okay. it that much yet. But okay. again, that's a really good idea. If you're interested, you could definitely contact me, and I could send you whatever you need. You know, to okay. to stay in the know. Yeah, and to build the, maybe a new partnership. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. Great. Um, okay, so that's um, all the time we have uh, for the Q&A. Thank you, Despina. Yes, thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs> I love the questions. And uh, yeah. just, again, feel free to contact me with whatever, uh, you know, whatever you may have as questions, thoughts, ideas. I'm, I'm there to, you know, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm there. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to wrap up. Um, so... Uh, for those of you who would like to share this webinar with others, um, you, there's going to be a link to the full presentation and um, including the question period um, that's going to be available online in the next, uh, in the coming week. Um, I'll be sending you a link, um, or my coworker Dahlia will be sending you a link on where to find it. Um, we would also like to ask for your feedback on today's presentation. So once you leave this webinar, a window will appear with a very short survey. We would really appreciate you taking the time to fill it out. Uh, this is a way to help us continue to improve the webinar experience for participants. Um, and then, so to find out more about this topic, um, you can check out our publications in our online resource center on our website. Um, and also, if you want to uh, just stay connected with Girls Action, um, you can visit our website. And if you want to find out more about our webinars and watch our previous ones, uh, you can go to girlsactionfoundation.ca slash en slash webinars. You can like us on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. And if you want more information on the webinars, you can contact me at miriam at girlsactionfoundation.ca. So thank you, everyone, uh, for attending and for being with us today. Um, and uh, please don't forget to fill out the survey. Have a great day, everyone.